lecture, we are going to be doing identifying reaction types. And at the end, we'll practice balancing a little bit more because it's important and we want to make sure everybody is good to go on that. So you should have your note packet out. We're going to do the page with the letter D, identifying reaction types. So it's important to recognize that just like chemical formulas are not random, chemical reactions aren't random either. They actually occur in really predictable um, patterns, and they follow the same kind of rules for forming ionic and covalent compounds that we've been learning about for the last month. So there are hundreds of different types of reactions. We are actually only going to focus on five. These are the really big five basic types of reactions. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we recognize the patterns that are occurring and then from those patterns, we can, um, we can predict what's going to happen based on what we already know about how chemical uh, compounds form. So we're going to go through, and for each one, we're going to give you two things. Um, we're going to give you a generic pattern and then a specific example. Okay. So for our generic pattern, for the first one, we are going to talk about a synthesis reaction. So, synthesis. Now, in a synthesis reaction, what happens is you have two or more reactants and they come together to make only one product. And this is kind of the pattern that you're going to look for. Multiple reactants and one product. It's the only one that has only one product. Okay. So this is our generic. Now, we need an actual example. So for our actual example, I'm going to give you a word equation so we can practice that. Okay, so if we have solid phosphorus, which has the formula P4, it's actually not just plain old P, but you wouldn't know that, so it's okay to just give you that. It's going to react with solid sulfur. which is actually S8, okay. and it's going to form tetraphosphorus trisulfide. So that is our reaction, okay? So solid phosphorus reacts with solid sulfur. So we're going to put P4 solid plus S, oops, S, there we go, 8 solid makes tetraphosphorus, so that's P, 4, trisulfide, S, 3. Now, I didn't tell you if it's solid or not, so you don't have to worry about a state symbol here. Now, again, this is not a balanced equation. I'm not really worrying about balancing these right now um, because I want just for us to see the patterns. We could... Um, absolutely go back and balance these if it drives you crazy, but for now, I just want you to concentrate on the pattern, which is several small reactants making one big product. So this is your first reaction, and it is called a synthesis reaction. Our second reaction is going to be the opposite of this. So instead of building something up, we are going to break it down, and that's going to be called a decomposition reaction. So in this one, you're going to have only one reactant and it's going to break down into several products. Okay, so it could be a really simple reactant into simple products or it could be a complicated reactant into a bunch of different products, but that's the pattern that we're going to look for. All right, so here's going to be our word equa equation. So electricity is run through water. Okay. Producing hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Can't quite fit those in one line, can I? Okay, so electricity is run through water. Water is my reactant, so here we go. It's H2O, it's liquid, and then it says producing, so I know that the arrow is next. So electricity, right, is not a reactant, 
it's not something that I can write a formula for. I could put it up here if I wanted to, but you don't have to. But it produces hydrogen gas, which is H2, and oxygen gas, which is O2. And again, it's not balanced, but what we have is this um, pattern of one reactant being broken down into several products. Right. Our next reaction, and you can see they're very simplistic, they're not hard, is called a single replacement. Sometimes you'll see it called displacement. Really just kind of depends on how you were taught. It's the same thing. But for my single, I like replacement. So single replacement, what I'm going to look for is I'm going to have a single element and a compound. And on the product side, it's going to make a single element and a new compound. So that's why it's called a single replacement, because a single element gets replaced during the reaction. So the name kind of describes what is happening. So here is my equation or reaction down here. So aluminum metal is placed in a solution. That's my abbreviation for solution right there um, of zinc 2 chloride. to form solid zinc and aqueous aluminum chloride. All right, so now let's turn these into formulas. Aluminum metal, that's just the element, and it's solid, is placed in, so plus a solution of zinc 2 chloride. Solution, remember, means that it has been dissolved in water. So AQ to, or to form, so there's my arrow, solid zinc, so CN, and aqueous aluminum chloride, AL, which is plus 3, and C, which is minus 1, and aqueous. Okay, so here's our pattern. See how this one element and a compound produce one element and a compound. So the zinc and the chlorine have switched places. That is called single replacement or single displacement. All right, number four. Number four is a double replacement. So in this case, you're going to actually have two compounds. So let's see. I'm just going down the alphabet here. So there's my two compounds, and they're going to make two new compounds. Now, these are always ionic, which is going to make them pretty easy to see what happens later when we have to predict the products. Um, but here we go. Solutions of lead to nitrate and potassium phosphate. are mixed to, to produce, so that's my arrow, right? And then my product, so to produce lead to phosphate, precipitate, and aqueous potassium nitrate. So you can see why we've been working on formula writing for so long because we need it to write our chemical equations. All right, so there's my sentence. Now I'm going to turn these into formulas. So lead to nitrate is PbNO32. And it says solution, so that means it's in water, it's a liquid. And potassium phosphate, okay, so do the crisscross, that's where the formula comes from. Two produces my arrow, lead to phosphate precipitate. So let's see, that would be three, P four, two. Now remember that we learned about a precipitate early on. It's a evidence of a reaction. It's a solid that forms. You saw that in one of the previous assignments. So this is the solid precipitate that's going to form in the liquid. And then 
the liquid is going to be KNO3, potassium nitrate. So again, not balanced, but lots of formulas here. So double replacement, two compounds making two new compounds. And we will do more of this later, but I just kind of want to point out what's happened here, right? The positive of one compound has hooked up with the negative of the other to make something new. And then the positive of one compound has hooked up with the negative of the other to make something new. So it's just followed the ionic compound rules. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, last reaction type for us is, we've already seen one of these. These are going to be combustion reactions. Now, for combustion reactions, I think you guys might can hear my dog snoring in the background. You're going to have a CH compound. This CH compound is called a hydrocarbon. Okay. And it's going to react with oxygen to burn. And it's always making the same thing. It makes carbon dioxide gas and water vapor, which often cools into liquid. Um, but it could be vapor, too. So you're going to look for this CH compound. So these were the ones that we were balancing that weren't so easy to balance, where you had to look out for the O's. So here we have propane. Now, we don't do a lot of organic stuff in first-year chemistry, so you're not going to know the names or the formulas of most of these um, hydrocarbons. They'll be given to you, so don't worry about that. And it's going to say something like, is burned in air. They don't usually say pure oxygen. Um, and a lot of times they'll just say it's burned in air, period, and they'll stop there. But we know that when we burn a hydrocarbon, it always makes the same thing. It always makes carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so it always makes the same stuff. So propane is going to be our hydrocarbon, which is C3H8. So this is just like the stuff that you would put in your gas grill burned in air when they say air they mean oxygen right there's other stuff in the air but that's not what it reacts with to produce carbon dioxide and water i'm going to call it gas okay so this one is very predictable it's always the same co2 and water always burns in oxygen. So there's very little for you to do here other than just know that's what a hydrocarbon will do when it is burned. So now you have five different reaction patterns. That's the top line. And then you have five different examples of these. So what you guys are going to do now um, is you're going to practice. It's like I got one slide too many in there. You're going to practice. So these problems Okay, are for you to practice getting the types of reactions. So we'll do these together, and then you have some that you'll do on your own. So let me kind of walk with you through these. Now, if you're at home, what I would do is I would pause the video, and I would give it a try and choose your answers, and then come back to see if you've got them right, because that's what we would do in class. So I'm looking for patterns, and what I see here is I see a compound, and I see a different compound, and over here I see two compounds, right? So I've definitely got a whole bunch of compounds. So when I have two compounds making two compounds, I have a double reaction, or a double replacement reaction. Okay. Now here, I have O2 plus C6H6, and I have CO2 and water. Now, I wrote these backwards on purpose just to see if you're paying attention. So a reaction that is a hydrocarbon in oxygen that makes CO2 and water is always combustion. Okay. For this third one, right, I have two reactants, and they make only one product. That's it. Okay. So what's the pattern for making only one product? synthesis. Okay. 
Right here I'm seeing an element by itself plus a compound, and it's making an element by itself and a compound. That is a single replacement reaction. And then one more here, again, an element plus a compound making an element plus a compound. So this one is also a single replacement reaction. So this is the first step. We're not balancing them right now. Um, right now, we are just looking to see if we can recognize the type of reaction that is present. Now, you have some of these in your note packet. I'm going to put these onto a Google form. So what you're going to do is you're going to balance them on your paper, and then you are going to decide what kind of reaction it is and then once you get these uh, five problems done, you'll go to your Google form and you will put in your balanced equation and the type of reaction that it is. So that's kind of our plan, okay? So hopefully this looks pretty manageable. It's a little easier than the first part of the year and we're gonna bring back some extra balancing practice. So this is a classwork grade. That means that it needs to be done now. Right, so if you are in class or zoomed in, um, make sure that you do it during your class period. Right? If you are absent, right, then you have a reason for it not to be done during your normal class period. But if you are not absent from school today, then um, that means that you should be able to get it done. So make sure that you're meeting your deadlines and uh, remembering that everything builds on itself.